Hey, everybody, welcome to another Conversations in Cases. And this is an exciting one because I think it's going to have a massive impact uh, on people. And so what are you wanting to kind of talk about today? We're going to talk about um, sugar, all things yes. sugar, and um, why it's so important to balance your blood sugar and to lower sugar in our diet Um you know, sugar has a lot of ill effects, and, and even in non-diabetics, people say, oh, no, my blood sugar is great, but in your body, there are um, events occurring that you don't even realize. Like, one of the things that's interesting, sugar causes a glycation, and so it's kind of like these, they're called AGEs, and they basically are these products that cause cellular aging and wrinkling and all this, and um, so no. obviously we don't want that. It also increases your risk of heart disease, obviously diabetes, um, cancer. It fuels um, those all those negative um, effects, and it can really it's it's like it's toxic, right, to your cells, and so you can have higher risk of all of those. The other thing is brain health. Um, they've talked about dementia being type three diabetes because sugar has such a toxic effect on our brain cells. Um, even a borderline blood sugar increases your risk as you age of dementia. So it's really important that we um, think about this, everyone, at you know, all ages. Right. At Optolive Medical, our vision is to help people to age gracefully, live a high-quality, optimal life. And um, I know you're going to get into a book here in a minute and some of this mm -hmm. other stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is key to become this mini scientist for how the foods that you eat are impacting your blood sugar. Mm -hmm. it, it just is, is uh, amazing to me. Now, what's this book that you're that you've read? It just uh, and you knew a lot of this stuff, but it really helped to drive home with the research that she was doing, mm -hmm. um, bringing to the forefront how um, the food that we eat is impacting, even how we move is impacting our blood sugar. Yeah, Glucose Revolution is the book, and she goes by Glucose Goddess on Instagram. You should really check her out. She's It's really amazing. She has some amazing graphics. She just puts this on lay terms so that you can understand why this is so important. And basically, she is a scientist, um, Jesse. It starts with an I in Shas. For, I don't know how to say her last name, but we'll, we'll reference it in the um, notes. We'll spell it correctly. We'll down spell it correctly. <laughs> and, um, but she's just wonderful. She has a lot of great graphics. She's a scientist who has wears this um, continuous glucose monitor. And even being non-diabetic, she shows what how food impacts our blood sugar and then how... Um, Sometimes we don't realize as our blood sugar is fluctuating, uh, we can have effects that might make us feel anxious, might make us feel irritable, tired. You know, our brain is really fueled. It's the first organ that feels the effects of blood sugar fluctuations because that's like what it uses for fuel. And so a lot of times I've had pay people in my case I'll even talk about is um, that anxiety was really fluctuations in blood sugar mm -hmm. and once we figured that out and got it stabilized it just was made drastic improvements um and you know every time we eat our body we we take that food into fuel so we have yeah, to what digest is the actual, it all the way through into absorbing it into the small intestine and all that mm -hmm. stuff so you take your food in and again think of food as fuel so whether that's a protein a fat or a carb in the long run, we're trying to get ATP, and, and that's usually glucose, which is sugar, gets converted into fuel, ATP, right? And that's how that's we cellular. keep You're this all the way down body there. moving. And so you take the food. You have to have good digestion. You have to break it down, and then it gets dumped into your blood sugar. And But it goes into, into the small intestine. There's one cell that separates the small intestine from the bloodstream and they're smart little things like it sees things going by on the small it's like oh i need you and it opens up and it's this long cell that pulls it in mm -hmm. to the bloodstream it's bizarre mm -hmm. how that works mm -hmm. um and so there's this intelligence um that if we don't break it down right then it's like i don't know what you are <laughs> yeah. it has yeah. to be digestion yeah. is yeah. critical is. but if we take a teaspoon of sugar 
right? There's nothing you like these cells. If sugar goes by the front of these cells on the on the um, on the lining of the uh, small intestine, they're like, oh yes. Well, it does have to be broken we will down. Yeah, it's that's in the, the point. It will automatically form. pull it in, right? Yeah, but you know, you can look Real at quick. maybe like a piece of fruit and a piece of bread, okay? And they may have the exact same carbs or calories and sugar content, but. When you look at that fruit, it has fiber. It has to be broken down. It has to be digested. And so that's a slower process. So it's not like all of a sudden, like all of that content of that apple gets broken down, you know, dumps into our bloodstream. Right. But like a piece of white bread, it doesn't take much to break that down and then boom. And so, you know, it's those every time you get a, you dump in your sugar, your pancreas has to respond and produce insulin. So insulin gets produced to help give the signal to the cell to open up and take up the fuel, the sugar mm -hmm. for fuel, I mean. And um, and so the faster a load or the bigger load of sugar that goes in our system, the bigger a spike of insulin has to go. And what insulin does, I mean, insulin, it's very important, but also insulin has some negative effects. It causes you to gain weight. It um, signals a spike in cortisol, which is that stress chemical. And then also... Every If we just keep feeding our body all these sugar, 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 then it has to keep going insulin, insulin, insulin. But the more, the higher the spike in insulin and the quicker it gets rid of that sugar, then what happens? All of a sudden your sugar dumps. And so people are on these roller coasters. And our your family loves high, roller low, coaster high. rides <laughs> like at Cedar Point. But this <laughs> not is not one you want yeah. going on in your body. Not at all. And so, you know, again, if you have a slow release of that sugar into your system, like with the apple, and it's slowly getting released, then your body will just kind of slowly release enough insulin to maintain it. But if it's like a big dump, then your body's like, oh my gosh, and it overreacts and it just dumps a bunch of insulin. And it really doesn't need all that. And so then, so with time, your cells get resistant to all that insulin because they're like, oh shoot, you know, you're giving me too much. And so people get what's called insulin resistance. And so they keep living in this high insulin state. And so people will get a blood test and they say, my sugar is great. My A1C is great, which is the kind of the average sugar, but their insulin may be high. And I've had a lot of people come to me and they can't lose weight, but it's because they're living in this chronic high insulin state. So and when you go type 2 diabetes, it's basically at the point to where You've over-exercised the insulin response to the point where it's like, I just might as well not turn off. Well, it's not. Well, then what happens is for a long time, yeah, your, I'm pancreas asking, keeps how does that work? your pancreas keeps up. You keep producing enough insulin. You can manage those high levels of sugar. But with time, your body's systems can't manage it, and it just gets overwhelmed. And so it just can't compensate enough your pancreas and your insulin and all those in your cells to deal with the high sugar. And so then the sugar starts accumulating in your blood, then you become diabetic. And so... Um, so if the pancreas gets overworked, does it just kind of like stop being as effective? Like if it if it has the ability to be this effective 100%, mm -hmm. and as you start to overwork it, does it actually goes down? Yeah, you can wear like out it, those cells, those beta cells, and they just can't oh, keep up. Oh, that's terrible. And, um, you know, that's how eventually like a type 2 diabetic could become type 1 or need insulin because, again, their pancreas is just pooped out. So... Um, oh, which is type one, mm -hmm, which is mm -hmm. a lot of times you're just not you producing need insulin. So I see, yeah. you know, it's all about and but even way earlier, you know, in this pre-diabetes or even you're not diabetic but you just are having some fluctuations in your sugar, um, it really does affect it. It basically kind of locks the fat cells and and um, you can't release fat, you can't burn fat, your metabolism slows down sugar, you know, it just really does wreak havoc on our body. And so there are these hacks. That's what she talks about in this book is like these hacks on how we can stabilize our blood sugar because it is a huge, it's really important. If we want to age optimally and we want to live a long, healthy life, we have to balance our blood sugar. And so these hacks she has, they're kind of fun. Like some of them are um, the order that you eat your food makes a huge difference on your blood sugar. Um, you eat, you want to eat like your fiber, like your veggies first, right? Because all that fiber gets in there and that dense stuff. And then you want to eat your protein, then your carbs, because it's just slower to start releasing that sugar. 
And also the carbs and the protein are fuel and they also make you feel full and say so you eat less. But the order you eat it, um, you got to look at these graphics on her Instagram mm -hmm. too. Like she'll have that monitor and it shows just change in the order that she ate the food. Like if she ate, um, you know, rice first and then ate her protein versus or if she ate a piece of pizza alone and then she put veggies or a salad and then pizza. When we eat, your sugar should really not go over 30 points up. And you'd be alarmed, like even a piece of fruit can spike you up like 60 points above your baseline. And just changing the order that she ate it, she could really make it like a more mm -hmm. smoother flat curve. And then you don't get the dip either. Um, she also talks about the um, walking after you eat or just a activity after you eat. Um, it was like a 10 minute walk within an hour of eating really changed the sugar spike and how because your your body's using that food and that fuel you just gave it and instead of it just floating in there in your bloodstream. It was right? interesting in her book. She's like, you know, I was just fascinated by this because I'm a scientist. Right. How does this affect? She put the glucose monitor on mm -hmm. and was doing all these things, making notes. And then she was starting to share it with her family. And then they started, I think some of them got one and then they created notes. And then she started compiling notes. And then other friends started sending in their information and she created this like big database. database. But then it just took off. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's kind of fascinating. So most of this stuff is based off of a lot of info, a lot of data. Mm -hmm. um, yes. It's, it's all it's scientific data. not just her. Data. Right. Um, it started with right. her, but then <clears throat> went very. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot, a and lot. even things, um, another thing she talks about is don't eat a naked carb. <laughs> so that means like don't just eat a carb alone. And even something that is good for you, some fruit, like she shows one where she ate a pear and her sugar just like spiked way over 30. It was like really high into kind of the red zone. And then she had some nut butter and then the pear and it was crazy it just looked kind so of like the a charcuterie nice... board's good so charcuterie board mm -hmm. get your your uh <laughs> proteins and nuts and that. some healthy cheese before it is true though i i've told patients that too like before or you sit down hummus. have some veggies um and a little bit of nuts and cheese and mm -hmm. veggies first and then you can go into your meal and so save the carbs or the heavier parts of your meal for the end so this book is a great introduction into becoming a little bit more of a mini scientist. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say a little bit more of a mini scientist mm -hmm. for how the blood sugar, um, we need to understand how it's impacting us, um, how much of a role, how big is our roller coaster ride inside the body? Uh, because if you can minimize it, you're going to live longer. Mm -hmm. You're going to, you're going to less tax the body and therefore have a longer life. But the thing that has fascinated me here recently was this Lumen device. You went one step further. Like you're, mm -hmm. well, you are a MD, so a PhD, but you got a PhD in this because you explained to us what this Lumen device does. Yeah, I've been so excited about That allowed you to get this. just hyper focused on what is it that you need to do mm -hmm. to get your body in the morning in fat burning, then carb burning it at lunch, and then fat burning again. Uh, at dinner, because you lost weight with this. It was interesting to watch. Well, I I just think, again, this whole personalized plan, that's what we're all about. Um, and I'm going through menopause. I'm at a different age and phase of my life. And I'm having tons of patients coming in, dealing with these same issues that, you know, my body's changing, and I just can't quite figure it out. And, you know, these hormone changes, it does. You start storing more belly fat, it stinks. And or start noticing that your energy is not the same um, and your weight's going, body fat to muscle mass is going um, in the wrong direction. And so that was my intrigue is, is really trying to help myself, but also to help patients. And so this device is really cool. You breathe into it's Lumen, L-U-M-E-N. We and have you, 10 of them. No, we have, I'm eight. taking one. Well, okay, nine, eight. eight. We have eight. Um, and so you you take this device and you like take a breath in, hold it, and then blow out, and it's measuring your CO two, which they convert it into if you're burning fat for fuel or burning carbs for fuel. And we really don't want to always be one or the other. There's something called metabolic flexibility because, again, when we wake up, we should be in fat burning mode, and then we should eat and get fueled up for the day so that we can you know, do our job and our work. Or if you're getting ready to exercise, you want to be 
carb loaded or carb mm -hmm. fueling so that you're using your carbs for your exercise and not pulling on your body's you know own muscle mm -hmm. stores right and so it really gives you recommendations. It gives you your macros. It tells you, and it's personalized. There's a phone app, to me. right? And it was kind of sharing with you. Mm -hmm. And it got to, to gets to know you for the first couple weeks and your habits and your and you track your food, your exercise, your sleep, and then with time, it would tell me how much protein, how many carbs and fat I should get in a day, and it broke it up with meals. And I think the biggest insight for me was like at first I wasn't waking up in fat burning mode. I was like, oh my gosh. And I'm not a big eater and I was exercising and things. Um, but what I realized is I was shifting. I wasn't getting enough protein and I was eating my carbs later in the day. Uh, and I definitely was not getting enough fat. So number one, I wasn't getting enough calories and feeling myself enough. And I was kind of doing that intermittent fasting. And there's a lot of good to that, but I think it depends person to person, your situation, your age, your stage of life. And so for me, it was not serving me well. Right. And so I really had to shift and do breakfast and lunch as my bigger meals. And then carbs at night, it says like five grams of carb for dinner, which is interesting. So that means basically do a lot of veggies and protein for dinner and fat. So you can have wine and a macaroon. And throw I it did off. learn that for a friend's birthday, and I had no carbs for dinner. I had veggies and the protein, tiny macaroon, and I had one macaroon and one glass of wine for her birthday, and that was even like three hours before we went to bed, two hours before we went to bed, and um, yeah, totally blew it. Woke up, I had been in fat brain mode, and woke up oh in carb brain mode. <laughs> Um, but it's really been so insightful. And I think I think that's the key to this is that we people think they're eating well. And um, it, it's really, I think, insightful when you start logging and looking at what you're doing and where so many hidden carbs are. One of my patients said, all I'm doing is cutting out ketchup because she loved ketchup and was eating ketchup every day. And she goes, do you know how many cups of sugar or it was ridiculous that she was cutting out and how many calories in a year by giving up her ketchup yeah. it's like well good for you i think it's interesting i think people need to recognize that our food industry today is designed to make money and um i think these opportunities you know as we're looking at our body in the mirror and it's like God, i'm gaining weight uh it feels so personal mm -hmm. but what we have to recognize it uh if we go back thousands of years, then, I mean, the food was different, right? I mean, you just go back 100 years before the food industry, right? And um, our body had to break down the food. But now the food industry recognized that our brain, ever since way back in the day, they say, you know, we're going back millions of years here, mm -hmm. um, that it recognized that it liked a ripe fruit over a not ripe fruit, right? So this is geared, this is just in our DNA. Like, you can't get rid of it, right? And so we feel it's so personal. Why can't I control this, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you can. You just have to get objective. You have to um, really get focused on it. Um, this book can help to educate and create these, help you to understand these hacks, mm -hmm. and then also start to look at minimizing with just the foods in general. And then the Luma device can take you even further. If you're like, okay, I, I think I know what I'm doing, but I'm still not losing it, then you're going to need this thing. Yeah, it's it is. It's what you're saying. We want this to be a sustainable, doable lifestyle, not a diet. No. And these hacks, a lot of my patients are like, oh, I can do that, you know. And it's been motivating. Like I'm going to go on a walk once or twice a day. I mean, how healthy is that? Right. And it really helps. Or I might just shift the way I'm eating. For me, I'm I'm fueling so much more during the day. I feel better. I don't have that afternoon crash and slump. And feel so tired where I want to have a cup of coffee. And because I'm really eating a lot more during the day and I'm not hungry. I'm not starving when I get home. I'm not wanting that nighttime snack feeling like I'm going to bed starving. Mm -hmm. And So I think it is. You really have to start studying your body. So what are your cases? You had a couple cases. Oh, yes. Um, <clears throat> so one is a patient who um, in her 20s and on her blood test, her sugar was actually low. And we did and was having kind of some just like lightheaded spells and all that. So I was like, that's interesting. You're getting low. Um, so we did a monitor. We had a sample monitor here, put that on her. 
And to watch, she was actually at times going too high. And then like if, if she'd have a bagel with cream cheese and then she would drop. It was like she was on this roller coaster, not getting enough protein, not pairing the foods up. And um, and those dips in the sugar were really affecting her as far as like feeling shaky or lightheaded and not being as optimal with sports. And um, so that was a pretty easy fix to see once we just said, you know, you're definitely not getting enough protein and pairing your foods properly. Um, and I think alarming to see the effects of things that you think aren't so bad or it was just like a little cheeseburger and fries from McDonald's. Oh my gosh, her sugar was like all over the place. It was weird. It was like a spike and then it went down and up and down and then she dropped. And I was like, oh my gosh, to see what fast food did. It was wild. And this is a totally healthy non-diabetic person, but it really did help and indirectly later helped hormones because I don't think we talk enough about how like our blood sugar and insulin really affect hormones. And a lot of young women have um, hormone issues, PCOS, which is a problem with your insulin sensitivity, and you can really regulate it if you just start watching your diet. And this Jessie talks a lot about that on her book and her Instagram, how much she has helped people, men and women, with their hormones and moods. Because the second one is a patient with um, anxiety and has been on anxiety medications. They're maxed out, all these different things. And it just kind of dawned on me as I was looking through some of the labs and they were maybe just like a subtle A1Cs at the upper end. And then we started doing some testing and saw the insulin was running a little high. And um, so I think your blood sugar fluctuations are making you have anxiety attacks because your brain is super sensitive. Your brain relies on sugar for fuel. And so what's the first thing when somebody starts going low on their sugar they get confused, they get irritable, they get anxious. And so that's all it was. And oh, without wow. having to tweak and increase anxiety meds more or do anything, that fixed the anxiety, the panic attacks. Yeah, those are, those are big. So, I mean, and you can imagine that, um, and hopefully these are motivators for people to say, you know, okay, I need to dive into this a little bit more. I need to become um, just a little mini scientist. The glucose uh, revolution is going to help with that. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and even using it as a resource, some of these hacks, like you said, mm -hmm. can be very helpful. And then if you're like, okay, I already get all that stuff and I'm ready to move to the next level, this Luma device, we only the got it left, is, amazing. is unbelievable. Yeah, uh, and I watched it um, affect you like really quick. It was like within a month. Mm -hmm. uh, and I do think like results. just my strength and muscle mass, because I'm feeling myself more properly, has right. been, and my sleep's been better. Yeah. That's been something I've it's really been working on. So, yeah. yeah it's exciting. All right. Well, hopefully this has been very helpful for you. If you guys have any suggestions or whatever, uh, leave us uh, leave us a note. I'd definitely give us a thumbs up if you like this. Share it. Uh, subscribe. All that wonderful stuff. So wishing you guys a wonderful day. Take care.